Hey guys, Jeff from Home Renovision here, and today we're here to talk about breathing life back into your old tools. Yeah, you know. If you've been a fan of the channel for a while, you've seen me use this skill saw. Uh, use this to build a shed. I've done this, wow, this tool's been in every video, pretty much, I, except the painting video, I think. But listen, for the last three years, I've been working with a cut cord. I don't know if you noticed it or not, but that's electrical tape, right? It's really brutal. Um, <sighs> Shouldn't be working like this, to be honest with you. It's kind of against the law. Except, I've been using it in my own home. So, it's not a commercial tool anymore. Now listen, I'm gonna take this, I'm gonna set it aside because this is now a seven foot extension cord. I'm gonna buy a new end so I can put a plug on that, or a receiver on that thing. That'll be for another day. But today I'm here to show you how to change the power supply cord when you've cut it. There are a thousand things that can happen to your power supply cord. And what I did is I just kind of stripped it back, exposed the wires, moretted them together, and taped it back on and said, close enough. That's fine in a dry environment, but if you're out in the rain, <laughs> you're gonna get zapped. So today, we're going to just go through the steps so that you can change your cord and do what I do. Years ago, when I was working in uh, fire restoration, I was called in to work on a flood. And we had to cut subflooring out on an entire basement and they had no power and we were running cord after cord after cord trying to use our skill saws to cut the majority of this out and after that experience I went home and I changed the cord and I put a 25 foot cord on my saw and I never had to do all that garbage ever again this is a 14 gauge wire it is the same power supply as the wire running through your wall plugs okay so if you put this on you're not diminishing the power available to the tool but it gives you all that flexibility. Now, this is also an expensive cord. This is the tough, durable cord, right? Just like the one that's on the tool now. And because it has the same diameter, bam, I think it's actually from the same factory. This is the rigid Founder Home Depot extension cord, 14 gauge. Here's the product literature if you need to see it. It's a 25 foot cord, indoor, outdoor. It is awesome. I love these cords. They even light up on the ends when the power is available. Can't go wrong. It's a perfect addition to your tool. It actually makes the saw better because now you can see if you have power. Ah. So what we're going to do is I need to have that. Got to be able to plug it in the wall, but I don't need this anymore. So we'll just get rid of that. All right. And now we are going to open up the tool and show you how to reattach it. Because if you have a tool, Chances are you have the ability to take the handle off and rewire your own cord because these things are expensive, right? This is a $200 saw. And I'd rather spend $50 on a new cord than buy another $200 saw because this saw is made to last. Okay, it's not a Ryobi. This is a nice, strong, quality DeWalt tool. It'll last longer than I'll live. And if I take care of it and keep the cord changed, it'll last a lifetime. If you buy a cheap tool, don't bother doing this kind of stuff. Just go bother buy another cheap tool. So what we're looking at is the handle assembly. It's going to have a series of screws. And if you just follow along, you'll see the thick crack. That, that's how you recognize what's a different piece. Okay, so I've got two over here as well. All right, let's take all these screws out. That should release it. Get that out of the way. Pick this piece off, set it over here. Now we're not disassembling a car engine here, it's just an electrical wire. So if you stop and take a good look, you've got a trigger mechanism here, okay? It's also screwed down in one location. It may be a good time to pull out your phone and take a couple of quick snapshots so you can remember what it looks like when you're done. Okay, so let's start with here. Uh, you see this? This is designed just to slide around and this part of the housing is really thick and designed to go right inside the tool. There you go. And then there's compression. This is actually designed so that you can you can pass your tools to somebody by the cord, right? You can set them down off a ladder or whatever. That's what's holding it. So you're not actually putting strain on the wire itself. It's this it's this part right here that you're 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 putting the pressure on. So Let's actually set that aside. There's another part. I'm looking at this and I've got extra wire in here. It's tucked in nice and casually. It's not aggressive. This is some sort of a wire clip. 
and that's nice. All those screws are the same. They're Torx screws in case you're wondering. So if you don't have Torx screws, you might want to grab yourself a little set with three of the four of the most common types. This is a harness. It has a third screw and you'll notice that one was shorter. Okay, so I'm just going to set things out so I remember where they go. It lifts off. There's my two wires. All right, now there's one more set screw here. That goes up there. Okay, now be real careful here because there are two lead wires that go to the motor. You don't want to disrupt those. I'm thinking those are going to be a different torque screw. Yeah, different screw. Okay, and we're going to take these ones. What I'm looking for is the black and the white. Whoopsie daisy. Okay, disengage. Now, you'll see that they have this special kind of lead on them, right? And that's great. That's a nice lead. That's really good quality equipment. But you know what? We're going to go back and we're going to screw this on just a little bit differently. We're going to take advantage of the fact that that's a nice long screw and just wrap the thread. You watch this and your minds will be blown. How easy this is to do. Now, one of the keys here is looking at this, this part here. You really want to know how this is working. It creates a lot of compression when you screw that onto the wire, okay? And so it's like a secondary area where the, the sleeve of the wire is actually being compressed, all right? So when you cut your wire, you really want to make sure that you measure from where this gets located. Give yourself enough length to get over here comfortable. We're going to keep this wire here just as a little extra guide, okay? We're going to measure out our wire here, and now we're going to cut the, the casing really carefully, rolling and cutting. Just want to get the outside casing here. There we go. Ah, brilliant. Now, one thing you're going to see right away is that all extension cords come with the ground. These power tools don't come with the ground. There's nowhere for me to attach the ground on it. So the only thing that I've got to do that's any different, and this is a little vascular surgery here, guys. We got to get this extra wire out of the way so that this compression fitting will work. So I'm going to cut down the sheathing here. And snip this off. Okay. Our wires and our sheathing all look exactly the same. Brilliant. Okay. Next thing to do is to cut the length of the white wire. That represents where the screw is. I'm going to make it a little bit longer. So I'm going to wrap the screw. I like the black the way it is. And because it's 14 gauge wire, we're going to look for the 14 gauge notch. I'm going to set that. Give myself about three quarters of an inch. Little twist and it'll pop off. And all those fibers are kept in good condition. We're not losing gauge on the wire by doing this. I think we're done with the extra wire bits now. Now it's just time to reinstall. You know, one of the benefits of doing this sort of thing is it makes you handy. You don't understand how things are working. Eh? Now we've got to get this back on first. Okay, because this is the outside part of the, the saw. Okay, there we go. Now this part here if we remember, it goes right here like this. And then this part goes on top with these bumps. Okay, those bumps go down and create compression on the wire, really right on top of the casing. Okay, so then we're going to take the long screws that came from this assembly. And we'll just torque up a little bit on each side, slowly close it together. Make sure you're not going to pinch your fingers in there. 
and torque it shut. Good. That's that part. That's the most important part right there. Now what we're going to do is we're going to attach it to the trigger, the switch here, before we get going too crazy. And then we'll just tuck in the extra wire because we know it's going to fit because we cut it exactly the same length. So let's work our way up. We're going to twist and turn, shape our wire into that shape that we are looking for. And since we're closing here in a clockwise direction, I'm going to wrap the wire in the same direction so it'll pull nice and tight. There we go. And we'll set that on there. Pinch those two together. Nice. Okay, boom, that's embedded. There we go. Now, if you've got crazy skills and the right tools and you want to attach those old connectors again, by all means, go right ahead. It's probably a better installation than just wrapping a screw. But I'm telling you right now, I've been doing this on old tools for years. And it works like a charm. Get the insulation of the wire out of the way and let the screw do the job. There we go. Now we don't want to over tighten here because you can break the threads. All right. Now we're just going to set this one back in place. Take that screw, put it back in here. Yeah, this would actually be a lot easier if I had two drills. <laughs> All right, there we go. Now the trigger is back operating again. Here we go. We just have some extra wire now. So what we're going to do is set this on that bracket right there and set this at the same time because it'll be a lot easier. I would suggest. Okay. Here we go. Okay, now we just want to tuck these wires. You'll see that there's like little grooves here that are designed just for where these wires locations are. Get them in and out of the way. Make sure that as this closes down, all these little spots, you don't have a wire pinching somewhere where you don't want it to pinch. We'll set it back in place. This is the moment of truth coming up. Now listen, if you like the idea of doing this sort of a repair on your tool, make sure you hit the like button. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel because we've got tips and tricks and hacks and whole project videos. Everything you need to be a master DIY renovator. Because at the end of the day, guys, the best contractor for your home is you. If you don't believe me, you should check out our other channel, Reality Renovision. It's going to be an awesome series that will hopefully be enlightening. And that is how you do fix a tool. If you'd like to see the rest of our bench series, you can click here. We're going to show you all kinds of tips and tricks off the job site. We'll see you next time.